Welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and this is Rusty. You guys seen him a few times. He has a way to sneak into my videos somehow. It's always, he likes to hover around and somehow end up in there. But today we're not gonna talk about Rusty. We're here to talk about the AIMA T9 Pro. <music> I try to include everyone on my channel. People are interested in DIY, people are interested in very high-end equipment. Also, I like to show things that are very inexpensive. So I do a little bit of variety and also heavily into DIY, so I cater for a little bit of everybody. I was contacted by Ema to review the T9 Pro. So I wasn't expecting a lot, said sure, because I always like to uh, show uh, a little bit of a variety of things. I was thinking maybe I'll, I'll do like a small system about it. And uh, so I got it here, I got it hooked up. I'm gonna quickly jump into the important stuff. So this amplifier has a combination of tubes and the class D amplifier, it's 100 watt per channel. So it's, it's pretty hefty considering it's such a small package. And uh, the first thing I did is I connected it to my uh, vintage speakers here. These are IMF speakers, one day I'll do a review about them, they're phenomenal and also connected it to, I, I rigged up a small uh, mini streamer here. I'll show you guys a little bit later towards the end of the video how this was put together. This is different than the other one I showcased earlier. This uses a smaller budget parts and uh, it's just to get things going, but it's still very, very good. Uh, but we're here to talk about the AIMA today. So the T9 Pro, uh, has improved from the T9 with a few things. They also changed the layout. They included this nice uh, uh, display. It's got a beautiful uh, VU meter and the display is actually pretty cool. I kind of like it. It's got some dancing lights. And it's, it's pretty cool. What's really nice about the T9 Pro is it's not just an amplifier. It has a built-in DAC and that's a very, very important feature. So you can easily stream right through it. All you need is just connect some speakers and you've got a system all in one little box ready to go. And that's what really could appeal to a lot of people that may be setting it up in a satellite system or into maybe starting up a new system. They don't have a big budget for it. Uh, so it's pretty versatile. And it's not just a class D amplifier, it has a tube buffer input so that's kind of also soften the sound so you're getting that tube you know digital sound all mixed together they also include the uh, cables so the, for example you have the uh, optical cable there is a usb cable so i have a small usb thumb drive and a beautiful remote control it is plastic but it's got some nice rounded edges and a good profile so when you do hold it it actually feels good how about the sound? This is what we're here for. Um, I was very, uh, when I first hooked it up, I didn't have, a, like I said, big expectations. But once it was hooked up and running, I was like, wow, this thing sounds good. Also, once you actually turn it on, it actually looks, looks pretty cool. It is small, but it's pretty powerful. It's got, like I said, 100 watt per channel. The, uh, it's got good bass, not too boomy, like fairly decent bass, actually. And the mid is really good and the highs are pretty nice and extended without being too bright. So it, uh, it sounded really good. It's got some good imaging. It's got basically all, all the stuff. So all in all, you will not be disappointed, I think, from this little amplifier. And it can be used for many purposes. So the easiest way to connect the IEMA T9 Pro, because it's actually an amplifier, a pre-amplifier, and a DAC all in one box, is all you need is plug it in with some speakers and you're good to go. And you can stream either via Bluetooth directly from uh, Tidal or Spotify or your favorite uh, streaming service. This is like the easiest way to connect and it sounds really, really good. So as you can see, the T9 Pro has been improved a little bit. There's a beautiful view meter here. And on this side, there's some nice uh, lights that kind of flicker around. And, uh, and this is the volume uh, level. And it's got all your inputs as well. So it's all nicely uh, designed in a nice cute place. Uh, 
when you uh, so right now I'm running actually tidal on it uh, as you can see it's not even on connected to anything just power and it's just streaming via Bluetooth all you have to do is connect speakers and you've got basically yourself a system that is singing so on the back what do we have we have a few inputs we've got some analog input here uh, left and right and this is a uh, digital input so we've got uh, coaxial, we've got optical, and we've got USB. And for output we've got basically speakers and an auxiliary out. So pretty much uh, it's uh, pretty simple and easy to hook and it's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Out of curiosity I uh, hooked it up to my high-end uh, system just to, to see how well it performs and, and it actually did really well. The sound was really good. Definitely not as good as my, uh, my high-end system but still I think for $150 it punches way above its price point. I've listened to it the first time on its own and what I did is I uh, I streamed some uh, Tidal music via Bluetooth and I listened to that and then I compared it to streaming through a dedicated streamer by Ian Canada and I'm gonna later on in the video show you how I put that thing together. It's a little bit different than the one I've showcased in my other videos. This one using a little bit a little less expensive parts. We're trying to keep the cost down because if you're using a T9 Pro for $150 trying to keep our cost down we want to keep basically all the other parts as well uh, cost effective. The idea is to get this really really good sound for as little money as we can get and I think after all this is everybody's dream. So as you can see the T9 Pro is really versatile it's basically you're getting a lot for 150 bucks you're getting an amplifier, pre-amplifier, a DAC and it's all in one contained box and it's also a tube as well so I mean you can't ask for more and whether you hook it up to a, just a pair of speakers and, and stream it straight from your phone or whether you include it with a little streamer or whatever you want to throw at it I think you'll be happy and I'm sure you can use it for something. If you want to order the AIMA T9 Pro you can order it straight from Amazon I'll put a link uh, below uh, I get an affiliate link if it helps me with a couple bucks if you order one of those and uh, if you want to see uh, the, how I built the streamer from Ian Canada uh, hang on to the end of the video I'm going to put a little uh, short clip towards the end on how this was assembled. Uh, all this is all explained towards the end of the video and also if you want more explanation watch my other videos where I built a more advanced streamer. I've got quite a few videos about those. Uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, this video. Uh, if you like it please subscribe it helps keep my channel going. I have a, quite a few videos in the pipeline coming up all about different streamers and DACs and I'm um, building there's already a couple videos started uh, popping out already and a few things about vintage audio things about music that you can listen to and and so on so hopefully we'll keep you guys coming back uh, so for the uh, little uh, streamer here that uh, beside it it is little but it's pretty uh, it's pretty powerful uh, I'm gonna show you quickly what parts I did and what I used uh, for that one if you want to build this uh, mini streamer I've got uh, lots of videos uh, about it. I have a series ongoing right now, two videos already out uh, but I'm gonna quickly show you uh, briefly uh, what the parts on this one is. These are all parts by Ian Canada. On the base here we have the pure Pi so basically this is like supplies the uh, good power for the Raspberry Pi which is on top of it right now. On top of that this is a FIFO Pi, this is uh, the Q3, the older Q3 version but you can get the uh, FIFO Pi Mia right now. I'll put a link of all these parts in the description below. So this goes on top of this one and uh, pretty much just kind of like Lego connects right there. This one you don't really need, it's called the monitor Pi only if you want to see like what's playing but you don't have to. On top of that this is going to be the transport Pi, uh, the Mark II version. Basically what does that mean? It's going to output, it's got uh, a coaxial here and a 
basically an optical uh, link as well. So this you could also have BNC and I2S if you need them for a different type of project. And here we go. And this is the master clock that's coming from the 505. You're going to put that into the clock input section that goes right here. You may want to uh, read the PDF about it. For the connection on this one, uh, we're getting the 3.3 volt and coming from the uh, pure uh, Pi. And it's going to feed both the uh, FIFO Pi and the Transport Pi uh, Mark II as well. And I bypass the, uh, the little LDO power supply here. So at the end you get a mini streamer that's very highly effective and highly functional and has a really good sound. And uh, for the AIMA we're going to use the optical uh, cable here and we're going to pull put that in here. On these you can put a you know a rune uh, like a rupee or something like that. You could put volumeo and all what you're doing here really is just supplying the AIMA with some better uh, some better streamer using better clocks versus using say your computer that is fairly noisy. You can also upgrade this in many ways so you can see my other videos about upgrading it. Hope you guys enjoy uh, this video. Take care and uh, we'll see you again.